All right, we got any uh, Frog Club members this morning? Come on down. Well, good morning. How's everybody? You know, adults, there's still a couple of chairs up, a couple of seats up here. Anybody else want to join the Frog Club this morning? Come on, come on down. Yeah, brother, come on down. All right. I love it. Thank you, thank you. Now we're full. Good. So, the reason why I'm involving uh, everybody down here, right, is because the Frog Club is for everybody, right? Because everybody needs to do what? Yeah, fully rely on God. So I know I continue to say it week after week. And maybe I don't need to make such a push, but I think it's an important push to just remind us of that it is for all ages. So yes, there are some things that we talk about in these videos that seem very kid-centered with uh, green puppets and all the rest of it, but really I'm trying to just encourage all of us to follow God with our whole heart and our whole mind and trust in Him all the time. Now, the reality is, is we can also trust the Bible. The Bible is the written word of God. It was written to us for a reason. It is words that we can trust in. It's words that we can rely on. It is words that are for us to bring us into a close proximity with God and into relationship with God and ultimately have those blessings of God impact our life on a day-to-day -day basis. But last week, we talked about a memory verse, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. And my challenge was to get one of you to memorize this verse in two weeks. Did anybody memorize this verse yet? Because I've got a $20 Christian bookstore gift card for one adult and one kid who might be able to say it this morning. Anybody? Still working on it. You know what I like to do when I'm working on a verse? I like to do it this way, and so we're going to we're going to try it this way. See if you can follow along with me. What I, what I like to do is eliminate 90% of all the letters and just have the words up there with the beginning letter, right? So, for example, we know it's 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, and then it helps me along in the memorization of the Scripture by saying all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, and so on and so forth. You can kind of follow the line, if you will, to help you memorize the Word of God. You know what I'm saying? So maybe that'll be something that's good for you to do. And uh, maybe we'll try that together as a group next week. But why don't we just go ahead and say the verse together, okay? You guys ready? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, right? So maybe the line trick will work, but those are the things that we want to focus on again this morning. We want to focus on Scripture and focusing on how we can trust Scripture. So again, we're going to use Douglas here. He's got another video about this, about a reason why we can trust the Bible. So I'm going to turn it over to my good buddy, Douglas, to see what he's got to say today. Okay. Can we really trust the Bible if we don't have the original copy? Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas, and today I want to talk to you guys about why we can trust the Bible. Now, there are lots of reasons to trust the Bible, but there are also lots of reasons why people say that we shouldn't trust the Bible. And today I wanted to kind of take apart one of those arguments, one of those reasons why people say we can't trust the Bible, and that reason is that that we don't actually have the original Bible. We just have copies of copies of copies. And actually saying that we don't have the original Bible is kind of, a, kind of an oversimplification, right? Because the Bible isn't just one book. I mean, it is, right? Like it is God's word. But this one book is made up of a whole bunch of little books. Books of poetry and history and, and, and letters written to people. There's 66 different books. Each one is a special part, and they all come together to make one Bible. And so there's 66 different books in the Bible, and they were all written over like a long time. Lots of different people wrote these lots of different books. But you want to know something crazy? Of the 66 books in the Bible, we don't have the original copy of any of those books. And so people say that since we don't have the originals, we can't 
trust the Bible, right? Because they say, they say that, that it probably doesn't even say what it used to say. Because they think that the, that the Bible that we have today, you know, thousands of years after it was written, is probably much, much different than what it actually was when they originally wrote it down. But you want to know something? The fact that we don't have the originals does not bother me one little bit. And I don't think it should worry you either. Have you ever played the game of telephone? Yeah, the people who say that, that it is a big problem that we don't have the originals often use the game of telephone as like an analogy for why it's a big deal. Because in the game of telephone, you get a bunch of people and you sit in a big circle and you have one person and they start with a phrase, a sentence, and they have to whisper it into the ear of the person sitting next to them. And so it might start off that the, that the sentence that they have is, is, cheeseburgers are delicious. And so they'd whisper into the person's ear next to them, they'd say, cheeseburgers are delicious. And then that person takes what they think they heard and then they whisper it to the next person next to them and then down and down and down the line. And then all, when you get all the way around the circle, the last person says what they thought they heard. And it's often way different from the original sentence. So it could be that the original sentence was cheeseburgers are delicious, but by the time it goes all the way around the circle, it's turned into chickens aren't fishes. Like it can get really, really messed up. The more people that pass it along the line, the more messed up the original sentence is. And so they say that since the Bible has been passed down from generation to generation over and over and over again, it's been copied and copied and copied and copied. We probably have nothing anywhere close to what it originally said. And that might seem like a good argument at first. Like when you first hear that, you might go, wow, I never thought about that. But it's not a good argument. First of all, it's a terrible analogy because, because the game of telephone is specifically designed to mess you up. Right? Like you're supposed to whisper into the person's ear and you can only say it once. You can't, you can't give them any further instructions. You just have to say it once into their ear and then they have to you know, just guess and say it to the next person and then they also whisper. If you took out all the rules specifically designed to make this game silly, it would be a really boring game. Right? Like if instead of whispering into the person's ear, you said it very loudly and instead of just saying it once, you could clarify if someone was confused, it would be very boring. But it would be super easy to say the same sentence all the way around the circle, right? Like if I said to the person next to me, if I said just out loud, cheeseburgers are delicious. And they said, oh, did you say chickens aren't fishes? I would say, no, I said cheeseburgers are delicious. And they'd say, oh, okay, I got it. And then they'd say it to the next person, they'd say cheeseburgers are delicious. And you know what? If they said something else and I'm sitting there listening, I would say, no, that's not what I said. And that's even just like speaking words, right? Like that's just, that's just passing along information by talking. But if you write it down, it's even harder to make mistakes than speaking, right? And so the game of telephone is a terrible, terrible analogy to, to say that the Bible would change over time. Because even if you just were to take away the rules of telephone to make it harder to get the same sentence all the way around the circle, and you just had like normal situation, you can pass on information pretty reliably. On top of that, the, the people who, who made copies of Scripture, you know, the different books of the Bible, they were not messing around, right? Like, they knew what they had. And they knew that when they made a copy, that it had to be perfect. Now, these days, it's super easy to make a copy of something because you just have, like, a computer and a printer do it. But back then, every single book was written by hand. If you wanted a book, somebody had to physically write it out. And when they were making copies of Scripture, they were insanely careful. If you had been making a copy of scripture and you had been writing this thing for months and you got one letter wrong in your copy, you had to start over. And people are still to this day saying that, you know, you can't trust the Bible because we just have copies of copies of copies. That the Bible that we have today, you know, thousands of years after it was written, is probably much, much different than what it actually was when they originally wrote it down. And it used to be a really big, like, popular theory, but it used to be a much bigger deal because, like, archaeologically speaking, it's pretty much been disproven that that happens, right? Because we have, we have several copies, lots and lots of copies of lots of different parts of Scripture. And the more copies we find, the more they line up, right? The more accurate they are to each other. The more they prove that the copies we have are good copies, and so I think it's really important that we not be afraid of questions, right? Even hard questions. I think it's okay to have questions. I think the real problem comes when, when we start dealing with answers or lack of answers, right? 
I think it's really important that if you have a question that you don't have the answer to, that you not just give up, right? Like on the one hand, some people, if they don't have the answer, they just get mad and mean, right? And they say, well, I know that the Bible is true, and so I'm just going to be really nasty to you to try to, you know, hide the fact that I don't know the answer. It's okay to not know the answer. But on the other hand, sometimes people say, well, if I don't have the answer, then I have to, I have to give up on Scripture. I have to give up on God. I have to give up on my faith in Jesus Christ. And that's not good either. Our belief in Jesus Christ is always going to have an element of faith, an element of believing that what Jesus says is true, whether we see the evidence or not. But because God is God, the one true God, because Jesus' words are true, then all these questions that we have are going to have an answer someday. Right? Like it used to be that we didn't have a lot of copies of Scripture, and so we couldn't really say with like a lot of confidence, like archaeological confidence, that all the copies are really, really, really close together. Like they look pretty much identical. We didn't used to be able to say that before, but now, you know, through archaeology and, and other things, we are learning that the things that we believed were true from the beginning are true. So my challenge to you guys today is that if you come across somebody who says, you know, we can't trust the Bible because it's just copies of copies of copies. I hope that you will stand firm on the truth that we can trust Scripture. Then that you would very kindly, I repeat, very kindly, share with them the reasons why you have hope in Jesus Christ. There are always going to be people who have reasons why they don't want to believe in God. And they're going to say that we can't believe in God either because of those reasons. And you know what? All of those reasons are wrong. Just flat out. I can say that confidently. We might not have any of the original copies of any of the books of the Bible, but we can still confidently believe the Word of God. We can absolutely trust the Bible. You know, one of the things that we uh, did this past month was I took my uh, wife and children down to Washington, D.C., and we got to see the Bible Museum. That was a really interesting place. I mean, it wasn't at all what I expected it to be. We kind of went in there, and the first thing that we did was uh, like a visual, like, what is that thing called? Uh, like you put the goggles on, and like it takes you to another universe, and you're like, virtual reality, right. Virtual reality of like uh, Jerusalem and the cities and the places that were in biblical times and stuff. And so you got to actually like look around and like, like be at the, the, the temple, but like look around and see the rest of the city and stuff. I mean, it was, it was almost like being there. Like it was pretty cool. But then we also uh, got to do this uh, experience where they talked about the Old Testament. And uh, it was almost like a mini play that they put you through. You got to walk from room to room and they sit you down and like there's all this like IMAX stuff going on around you. All I have to say is we got to the floor where the old Bibles were. And because it's a Bible museum, right, they had, you know, documents there that were either 100 years old or, like, ancient, ancient stuff. And to his point, what Douglas was saying was I was admiring the amount of work that it took for one of these priests or one of these monks or whatever to actually put together one of these Bibles that they would copy from page to page. Because even in the Jerusalem time or even in the days of uh, the Hebrews, if they, for example, wrote the word the Lord or Jehovah or the name for God, they would throw that pen away after they wrote the name of God and then they would go take a bath and change all their clothes and they would come back to writing scriptures again. Now imagine if there was like 10 or 15 times that God appeared on that page of scripture and you spent all this time bathing yourself and making yourself, your, yourself holy again, if you will, ceremonially holy again before you came back to the pages of scripture, the last thing you'd want to do <laughs> It's translate a word incorrect. You would like never end. Like you would just be, you know, screw it up and take a bath all the time. That's all you would ever do. But even the pages of the, uh, the book were just so beautiful and the artwork was just so beautiful. Like if you messed up, I mean, tragic. Like hours worth of work. Just that sheet's no good. I got to start over. You know, and it was just so awesome that these people spent, uh, I was looking at one monk who spent like his entire life basically writing one book, uh, one, well, writing that one book, and that one book was just the Bible, you know, and it was just awesome to see stuff like that. So to his point of how seriously these translators translated or, or copied, if you will, scripture from scripture, it's, he's dead on, like, they took it seriously, like, it meant everything to have 
the words absolutely perfect from page to page. Make sense? Does that inspire you to want to go to the Bible Museum? Maybe. It would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe next year. We'll see. All right. So we need to take an offering. Do I get a couple of offer, uh, uh Yeah, a couple of ladies here. You want to help me with offering? Sure. Come on up. We'll take the offering, and I'll pray before we pass that out. Let's pray. Father God, we, again, thank you so much that you've given us uh, the ability to serve you uh, well, and to know you. Lord, we have this gift that we want to uh, give back to you so that you would be able to continue your kingdom here even in this place. Lord, we just pray that you would put a special blessing not only on this gift, but also the giver for being obedient to your will. Pray for all these in Christ's name. Amen. All right. Frog Club, you can go back to your seats. And Jeremy.